Hi, we're George and Louise, and this video is about one-night stands, hookups, and how to kiss. What she means is one-night stays, and how we need to pay attention to our waste and fresh water tanks and electrical power needs when we're off-grid and how to keep it simple. One of our major goals for this trip was to visit Yellowstone National Park. We were able to book a five-night stay near the west entrance of the park, so we needed to plan a way to get there by a specific date. We planned several stops, including a series of one-night stays from Harrisburg, Kentucky, that covered over 1,900 miles to get us to our destination on time. It's not that we did it fast and had long travel days. We just didn't stop for very long, and we traveled through areas we had already visited, and we just wanted to get to Yellowstone to keep our reservation. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. We just left Wisconsin Dells and we're heading to Rochester, Minnesota. A little private campground called no, Autumn campground. Woods. Oh, Autumn Woods, yeah, right. For the next week, we'll be doing one night stays. Yeah, trying to get the Yellowstone. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit grueling, but um, it was part of the plan. We did it consciously. We're still only traveling maybe four hours a day. Yep. And we just want to get to Yellowstone. <laughs> Tomorrow we get, we're get stopping at Sioux Falls. We really like that area. We try to get there early and go downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because last time we just kind of went downtown but spent both of, most of our time at the falls. Yeah. So this time we'll um, get some steps in downtown. That'll yep. be fun. We're still going to see the falls though. Yes. Let's talk about how to stay nimble, simple, and enjoy the ride. For example, planning your meals. It's so important. Make sure you have everything that you need on hand so that you don't have to stop at a grocery store. You just want to keep to healthy, enjoyable meals. You know, try cooking once, eating twice. You know, prep when you have a chance. Uh, lunch breaks are really important. So our go-tos are fruit, cheese and crackers, nuts protein shakes, that kind of thing. So I'll prepare that in the morning and then I'll just get up and go over to the refrigerator and grab that while we're driving along. Sometimes we know that on our route there's going to be something that we want to stop and see. And if we do, then I pack a picnic lunch and then we can enjoy a picnic and a break for lunch. It's really great. Uh, whatever you do eat, eat on paper plates and paper bowls and use paper napkins. Just avoid doing those dishes. It's important to limit laundry. Use face wipes and body wipes and think twice before using a towel. Maybe this is where you just use paper towels instead. When you stop for the night, don't set up more than you need to. Do you really need that rug? Do you really need that chair? You know, just keep it simple. If you tow like us, don't forget to turn off the brake system so your battery doesn't die on you. Ask us how we know. And don't forget your departure checklist. Even though you're keeping it simple, you want to keep it safe. Unusual situations can lead to big mistakes. You may not want to unhook for one night, but still do a break check. Keep it simple, but keep it safe. As mentioned, we are going from one dry camping destination to another. It is important for us to plan ahead to ensure that we have enough room in our waste tanks and enough fresh water to get us to our next water supply. I usually empty my waste tanks whenever I can. As far as fresh water is concerned, I usually only put on as much as I need to get to our next water supply. I will usually only put on five or six gallons of fresh water if we are going to be traveling for four or five hours and our next destination will have fresh water. If we will be doing a one night stay without hookups, I'll put on about 10 gallons of fresh water. This will usually get us through the night if we don't plan on doing any dishes or taking showers. If we will be doing extended dry camping, I may fill the tank completely with fresh water. The key here is to be efficient. 10 gallons of water weighs about 83 pounds, and every 100 pounds of weight we add to the RV reduces our fuel efficiency by 2%. So it is important to keep our waste tanks empty and carry only as much fresh water as we need to get us to our next water supply. We have a propane generator, so it consumes about three quarters of a gallon of propane per hour when running the generator. 
So our 13 gallon propane tank doesn't get us very far when we're running the Jenny. We will start looking for propane once our tank reaches about half full. And if we are planning on dry camping for an extended period of time, we always stop and top it off. We have solar panels on our RV, but some areas have dense tree cover. So we'll do some research before we leave to see if we're gonna to need to run the generator. If we'll be dry camping for the day and we charged all of our devices, most of our devices will serve us well by the time we start driving the next day. Most everything we own will be charged by the alternator in the RV by the time we get to our next destination. When we are not connected to shore power, we will try to eliminate as much electrical drain as possible. Things like Wi-Fi and computers are turned off before we go to bed so that they don't slowly drain our house batteries while we're sleeping. It would be an awful start to the next day if Louise is not able to make coffee in the morning because the house batteries are dead. If we need to empty our waste tanks in between full hookup destinations, we have found that the Campendium app has been helpful in showing us where the nearest dump station is. Well, that ends our trek of one night stays. Yes. <laughs> We're heading to Yellowstone for five nights. It's going to be totally worth all those one night stays. Yeah. The park that we were at was, was pretty nice. It was very well maintained. You could tell that they yeah. were proud of their park, but it was small. And there was, of course, as often is, a train. <laughs> yeah. And train. some highway noise. But um, I slept well. Uh, I did. I woke up a couple Not times excellent. because of the train. Yeah, um, same. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice park. It was. Yeah, they had a nice little sitting area that you yeah. could um, enjoy. It was a brand new patio set with all of the things. Nice, I mean, I had a great shaded. comfy chair with a good cushion and a hassock. It was great. So I enjoyed reading for a couple of hours. But we came to downtown Bozeman. Yep, um, where we are and now. And we, we yeah. got some steps in. Yeah, this is downtown Bozeman. And um, we... Quaint little town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's got a lot going on, a lot of restaurants, a, a lot, lot of shops. Yeah, a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops. I like the shops. I like the, um, I like the quality and the um, style of the shops. It's more um, athletic and casual, but stylish. I love that. But of course, we didn't buy anything because you know space is a constraint. Yeah, but. Uh... Did a lot of window shopping. Yes, we did. We just enjoyed um, just seeing the nice things. Unfortunately, there's some construction down here, but um, the sidewalks were nice and wide, and um, it was it was pleasant. The weather, oh my God, the weather. Yeah, Mid seventies, our favorite. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we had ice cream. Yeah. That was really good. Part of that is because we're pretty far north, um, and we're at almost five thousand feet elevation, so. It's cooler. Yes, yes, very nice. Well, as you can see, we arrived at Yellowstone Grizzly RV Park near the west entrance of Yellowstone. Have you been to Yellowstone? Leave a comment below and watch for an upcoming video on our experience and what we learned to make national park visits just a little bit more enjoyable.